For centuries, the whole world was wondering how the giants of Easter Island moved around. Maybe powerful chiefs ordered big groups of workers to haul them. Or the elite controlled special statue-making quarries. But now we finally know the people of Rapa Nui didn't drag their Moai statues into place like lifeless logs. They made them walk. Scientists looked at nearly a thousand Moai, checked their shapes, proportions, wear patterns, and the gentle forward lean and curved bays that many statues have. And then it struck them. Those details weren't accidents, but engineering. The forward lean shifts the center of gravity, and the curved base lets the statue pivot like a pendulum. Once the motion starts, inertia helps carry each step. Think of it like walking an enormous stone toddler using ropes and balance. To prove this right, the research team built a 4.35-ton replica. The real statues were around 13 tons, and some weighed up to 80 tons. With 18 people on the ropes, they walked this statue about 300 feet, about the length of a football field, in 40 minutes. That's faster and easier than dragging something flat across logs or rollers. The old roads of Rapa Nui also help the process. They're about 14 feet wide, and the way they curve inward makes them perfect to keep a statue steady while it walks forward. Every time the islanders moved a moa, they weren't just walking it but they were literally shaping the road as part of the job. When you look at the island's landscape today, you can actually see these paths crisscrossing each other, sometimes running side by side like alternate routes. The ancient workers were likely clearing a stretch of ground, moving the statue a bit, clearing a bit more, then rocking it forward again in a specific rhythm. It looks like they spent just as much time prepping the road as they did moving the statue itself. So, the ancient Rapa Nui didn't need thousands of workers or modern machinery, and it all worked with just ingenuity, rhythm, teamwork, and clever design. Their transportation wasn't the only Moai mystery. People knew the statues were meant to honor important chiefs, but no one could explain why the ancient islanders picked those exact spots for them. Most of the Moai sit right along the coastline, almost like they're guarding the island. So a team of scientists took a closer look at those locations, and the answer turned out to be all about water. Easter Island's volcanic soil is super porous, which means it soaks up rainfall quickly. Because of that, there weren't enough rivers or streams, and the island ended up with very limited fresh water. Hundreds of years ago, the people survived thanks to groundwater discharge, Basically, water stored deep underground in layers of rock or soil called aquifers eventually rises up to the surface on its own. When that water bubbled up near the coast, it mixed with seawater, but the mix stayed fresh enough to drink. The locals collected it right from those coastal spots, and that's exactly where they built the Moai. They weren't just decorating the coastline, they were marking the island's most essential source of fresh water. Now, most of the Moai bodies were made from volcanic tuff, a soft, easily carved stone, and most of the statues were carved in one quarry inside an ancient volcano. In October 2023, a wildfire tore through the quarry, and everyone who cares about Rapa Nui got really concerned about whether the site would survive future disasters. So when a team of scientists arrived in January the following year, a local community group asked if they could document the quarry just in case another fire damaged it for good. The geographers jumped at the chance and launched about 30 drone flights over the quarry. Flight after flight, they collected an incredible 22,000 photos. After that, they spent months running those images through computer software that stitched every piece together into a single, hyper-detailed 3D model. Now anyone in the world can explore Ranu Raraku, one of Easter Island's most important quarries, without even setting foot on the island. Of course, the 3D model isn't just an online tour platform. The team noticed that there were several workshops inside the quarry, and carving techniques changed from one site to another. So there wasn't one chief who told them how to do it, but rather each spot worked like its own workshop that was tied to a specific family clan. This could also be another proof that the Moai could move with far fewer people than anyone once believed. 
probably around 20 to 50. That's roughly the size of an extended family or small lineage group on Easter Island. Most statues were carved while lying on their backs from the top down. In the most common method, the carvers focused on the face first, shaping the eyes, nose, and mouth, and then carved the outline of the head and body around those features. The second method flipped that order. They carved the entire block into the basic shape of a moai first and didn't add any details until later. And in a few rare cases, the carvers went at the stone from the side and worked straight into a nearly vertical cliff, which must have taken some great skill. And just when researchers mapped over a thousand moai and thought they knew them all, the island threw them a curveball. In the middle of a dried up lake bed, a place no one expected anything, another statue appeared in 2025. It was the first statue found in a lake bed before, and it might not be the last. For at least two or three hundred years, the laguna was almost 10 feet deep, so it would be impossible for humans to build or put a statue on the bottom. Scientists think the moai are over 500 years old. It's possible that the Rapa Nui people who built them probably brought the statue here when the lake was dry in the past. The new find turned out to be slightly over 5 feet tall, which is smaller than the other statues on the island. As the region continues to dry out, the lake bed has started revealing what it's been hiding for in who knows how long. More statues could be tucked under those thick reeds that grew over the lake for centuries. Now that the water has receded, scientists might be able to use ground sensing tools to detect what's buried beneath the surface. While researchers keep studying the statues and solving their mysteries, nature is playing against them. A new study shows that by 2080, seasonal waves could push far enough inland to hit some of Easter Island's massive Moai statues. These stone giants have stood through everything. Harsh sun, relentless wind, pounding rain, lichens slowly creeping across their surfaces, and even wildfires. But rising sea levels already threaten the island's coast, and the Moai now face a danger bigger than anything they've endured before. Researchers built a super detailed digital model, a digital twin of a bay on the island's southeast coast. They ran a bunch of simulations to see how different sea level rise scenarios would change the way waves move through the bay. The results of these simulations showed that waves could start reaching the site's 15 moai by 2080, and then of the most recognizable and photographed statues on the island could end up flooded. This spot sits on a big ceremonial platform and draws more visitors than almost any other moai spot on Rapa Nui. And the danger doesn't stop there. Dozens of other important cultural features nearby are also in danger. Ancient dwellings, petroglyphs carved into stone, burial sites, old rock gardens. Basically, the entire physical memory of Rapa Nui's cultural history. If the island doesn't manage these risks, it could even lose its UNESCO World Heritage status. Now that researchers understand the threat more clearly, they want to use this knowledge to help protect the island. Scientists hope to collaborate closely with local communities to safeguard Rapa Nui's cultural heritage for future generations. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.